Good morning, welcome to our Canyon Conversations today. Today we will be talking about our fireflies, our western fireflies. Um, so yes, you may be asking, how huh, fireflies here? We do have fireflies here in the state of Utah, as well as throughout the West or so surrounding neighboring states. Um, and we're learning a lot more about them. There's still a lot we don't know, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about them um, and also make you aware of the Western Firefly Pop Project. Um, so we do want to know where fireflies are. Um, together with um, the Natural History Museum of Utah um, and some scientists at BYU are trying to map out um, where our populations are. Um, so if you do see fireflies, um, this summer, you're likely to start seeing them at the end of this month, so about right now, the end of May um, through early July, and you'll want to report those, um, and I will tell you how to do that. Um, so, yeah, first off, let's start with a map of where they are. Um, so maybe you don't believe me, but we do have them here. Um, so, this is a map of Utah. Um, all those dots you see are uh, reported sightings of our fireflies. We've even got a few up in southern Idaho. Um, we are particularly interested this season in trying to map more locations um, within Idaho. Um, so if you're up there in Idaho um, and are out at night and see fireflies, please do report them. So you just if you just Google Western Fireflies, um, you'll find the Natural History Museum site um, or um, just go straight to their website um, and just click submit a signing. It's just a couple questions, really easy. Um, or you feel free to email me as well. But we want to know where they're at up there in Idaho. Um, we've got a pretty good grasp on Utah. We still want to um, see those sightings because uh, sometimes uh, they pop up in some unexpected places. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what fireflies are. We'll cover their life cycle a little bit. Um, what makes them glow? Some things you can do to help out our western firefly populations. Um, so fireflies, they are an insect. They're not actually a fly though. Um, they're part of the family Lampyridae. Um, so this is the beetle family. Um, so there is lots and lots of beetles in the world. There is more beetle species. And then, then there are reptiles, birds, mammals, and fish combined. So pretty crazy. Um, there's more than 2,000 species of firefly worldwide within that Lampyridae family. Um, here in the United States, we have about 170 species. Um, so we do have fireflies on every continent in the world except for Antarctica. A little too cold there. Um, our western species, there is still a lot we're learning about them. Um, so there's a lot we don't know that we're still trying to figure out um, regarding our species here in the West. So let's talk a little bit about um, the life cycle of a firefly. So we're most familiar with them as an adult. Um, so that's that beetle. Um, so you can tell they're a beetle if I go back. Um, uh, you'll be able to see in future pictures. And they have that straight line down their back where their wings meet. Um, they aren't insects, so they do have six legs. Um, if you remember insect anatomy, they've got a head, thorax, and then the abdomen. Um, but they begin their life um, as an egg and then go through a complete metamorphosis, uh, similar to frogs and butterflies, um, before um, they come out as an adult firefly that we're most familiar with. Um, so, of course, they start out as an egg. Um, so, eggs, a lot of species lay their eggs underground. They might lay them um, on leaves. Um, eggs can glow, too. Um, so, believe it or not, they can glow at all stages of their life. Um, and they typically spend about three to four weeks as an egg before they emerge as a larva. So, if we look at um, our larva, um, these guys are pretty hungry carnivores, and this is the bulk of a firefly's life cycle. They can spend a year and a half to two years as a larva, um, just eating as much as they possibly can. And um, so they prey on other arthropods like snails, slugs, and worms. Have you ever heard the term glowworm? That's actually referring to these guys, the larva, um, and the glow, so glowing larvae or glowworms. Um, so you can kind of see the picture down on the, the left-hand side. Um, that's a, what a firefly larva looks like. Kind of look like little armored dinosaur looking like things. On the middle picture, you will see the mouth parts of a larva. Um, and then that right one, they're predating on a little snail. And so they have some specialized protruding mouth parts that they use to prey 
on those slugs and snails and worms. And they actually inject um, a paralytic uh, to mobilize their prey before they eat them. Um, so after that one to two years as a larva eating all they can, um, they're going to pupate. Um, so during that larval stage, they will shed um, their exoskeleton a few times. That last shed, um, they're going to pupate um, within that exoskeleton for approximately 10 or so days. Um, that's when the larva structures break down and they undergo that change um, into an adult. You start to see wings appear. Adults, this is actually the shortest stage of their life cycle. Um, so adults only live about two weeks um, with the sole goal of finding a mate and laying eggs. Um, so some adult species do eat nectar or pollen. Um, a lot of adults, um, they don't eat anything at all. Uh, that's why they eat so much as a larva. They're gathering all the energy they can. And then as an adult, they're mostly just focused on finding a mate and laying eggs. So let's talk about um, what makes them glow, why they're so intriguing. So we're always fascinated with fireflies um, because of their bioluminescence. There's something um, wonderful about seeing glowing fireflies. Um, so there's a lot of animals um, that have bioluminescence in organisms, uh, particularly think about marine environments. Um, there's algae, aquatic um, bacteria that have bioluminescence, a lot of different kinds of fish, jellyfish. Um, so fireflies, um, they have a really efficient light. Um, so 100% of the energy that they emit um, manifests itself as light. So we call that cold light. Um, so just meaning it doesn't produce any heat. Um, so if you think about a firefly, um, that could be um, pretty problematic if that creates a lot of heat for them. If you look in the picture, you can see um, kind of that tail section. So that's the abdomen of the firefly. That's where they produce that glow. Um, if you compare um, that 100% cold light, so it's all light, to an incandescent light bulb, only 10% of that energy is light. The rest of it comes off as heat. So if you fill um, a light bulb, they do get pretty hot. Um, so it's kind of an enzymatic chemical reaction, so a combination of enzymes and chemicals um, that create that bioluminescence. And um, so oxygen combines with calcium and adenosine triphosphates, or ATP as you might remember it from biology. Um, so ATP is kind of that responsible for um, taking that energy from food and kind of transforming it into a chemical energy we can use. Um, so, and that's able to combine um, with the chemical luciferin um, and an enzyme lucifer, lucifer, excuse me, luciferase um, to produce um, that bioluminescence, that cold light. Um, so pretty interesting, um, I mean, are some of our glow sticks and modern inventions have been inspired by fireflies, um, but why do they do it? It's not just to look cool or for our entertainment. Um, so it evolved um, as a way to deter predators, um, so basically to say we taste bad, leave me alone. Um, so they do actually have toxins that can be poisonous um, to their potential predators. Um, so if you think about frogs, um, lizards, salamanders, um, other animals that might try and eat um, firefly, particularly those larvae. Um, they're glowing as just a warning, saying, hey, you probably don't want to eat us. We taste bad. Um, we're not going to make you feel good. We'll probably give you a tummy ache. Um, as adults, um, the glowing is a way for them to attract a mate. Um, so each species um, has um, a specific flash pattern um, that they'll use um, to match up with the males and females. A lot of species, the females might um, stay still either on the ground or up on a branch um, while the males are the ones flying around looking for those females. Um, and there is one particular genus. Um, we don't think um, our Utah fireflies are this genus, um, but the genus Photurus, um, which you can find a lot of this genus back in the eastern US. Um, some of their females, um, they actually we call them femme fatales. They will flash um, the patterns of other firefly species to lure them in um, for dinner. 
Um, so that particular um, genus of fireflies, they don't produce their own toxins, and so they gather those toxins by eating other fireflies. Um, interesting enough, the males of the species have learned that as well. So sometimes they will mimic other firefly species um, to attract those femme fatales and find a mate. Um, so pretty clever, these little fireflies. Um, I will put a link. So um, this link on here is to um, a pretty amazing video of some fireflies um, in Mexico um, glowing and doing their mating dance. It's actually really hard to get um, good video or good footage of fireflies um, in the night when they're actually glowing. If you do happen to get um, some great videos, video footage or photos of glowing fireflies, we'd love um, if you would share that with us. Um, so it's hard to do. Um, but it's just a short three minute video um, by National Geographic. Um, they didn't alter any of the footage. Um, it's some pretty amazing footage of some glowing fireflies for you to check out. So um, you're probably wondering, now you've learned all about these, um, where to go, when to go look for them um, around you. Um, so you can um, go back to and refer to that map that we showed at the very beginning of this presentation. Um, so if you just go to the Natural History Museum of Utah, nhmu.utah.edu slash fireflies, that'll pull up that map. Um, you can look at that and see where the, where the nearest sightings um, to you have been reported. Um, but fireflies, um, they actually like wet, marshy habitats. Um, so you want to look for them near water. If you've got a wetland, marshy area near you, that would be a good place to go. Uh, of course, after dark. Um, they're not great flyers. Um, so people often ask how they got to Utah. They didn't migrate here. They've always been here. They're kind of in isolated pockets, which may be why, why you haven't seen them. Um, and they're only active as adults that are actually flying around and glowing and visible from late May to about early July. So about maybe through the 4th of July weekend, you can expect to see them. Um, but start looking for them right about now um, and let us know where and when you're seeing them. Um, so the Western Firefly Project was developed by the Natural History Museum of Utah in partnership with um, some scientists at BYU with the purpose of continuing to find fireflies. Um, throughout the western U.S. in places where they may not be expected to be and to map out those western populations. Um, so as I mentioned this year, um, we're particularly interested in trying to um, map more of those settings up in Idaho. Um, so please do let us know up there in Idaho if you're seeing any fireflies. Um, you can just report those um, to the National History Museum of Utah or I will post my email address on here as well and you can let us know I'm coordinating um, with the Natural History Museum of Utah and I will let them know. Um, but yes, just find a marshy habitat and keep your eyes open throughout the next couple months um, as you look for fireflies. Um, fireflies do seem to be declining firefly populations um, across the world. Um, so as I mentioned, they're found in every continent except Antarctica. Um, and there's a few contributions to that decline. Um, so we'll talk about them briefly here. Um, the first one is, as we discussed, their habitat is wetlands. And without those wetlands um, and in years of drought and heat, that's really going to um, severely impact firefly populations. So if we look at just the U.S., um, about a third of U.S. wetlands um, have been lost um, since the American Revolution. So that's quite a large portion. Um, a very few states um, have a large portion of their wetlands still intact. Alaska is about the only exception that they've only lost about 1% of their wetlands. Um, here in the lower 48, um, we've lost a significant portion of our wetlands, which is where that firefly habitat is. Another factor, of course, could be climate change. Um, drought years, um, more heat is going to impact that environment, impact water, um, and it's going to impact that life cycle of our fireflies. Um, so another factor is light pollution. So if you refer to the map on the right, you will see um, a light pollution map of the U.S. Um, so you can see if you look approximately where Utah is, um, we we don't have as much here compared to the East Coast here, uh, but you can definitely see a pocket kind of along the Wasatch front there, Salt Lake area, um, where we do have more light pollution. 
Um, but if you think about an adult firefly out there flying around and trying to attract a mate, um, if they're seeing the headlights of cars, um, flashlights, the lights from stores and homes, street lights, it's going to make it a lot more difficult for them to signal and find each other, which is going to result in fewer fire fireflies the following season. Um, so a third factor um, is the use of pesticides. Um, so, so neonicotinoids um, is a, a class of pesticides that can really harm um, firefly larvae and their prey, those other arthropods that they like to prey on. Um, so these neonicotinoids, um, they're related to nicotine, um, and they're really common insecticides, um, and they can leave a residue that can accumulate in the pollen and nectar of treated plants. Um, so for adult fireflies that may be um, eating nectar or pollen, you can imagine that really affects them. Um, regardless of if they're eating that or not, though, that's going to infect um, their prey of their larva um, and the entire ecosystem. Also, um, living in wetlands, mosquitoes are a major concern for us people, so we often are spraying insecticides to target those mosquitoes. Um, and as you can imagine, that's also a concern um, that can impact fireflies. Um, so think about just if you're near a wetland in your yard, you know, what might be washing it down your drain, and maybe some different options um, to use in your yard. Um, so how can you help them? Um, if you do see fireflies out and about this summer, please don't catch them. Um, so if you grew up maybe back east or in the Midwest as a kid, um, probably was kind of fun to chase um, the lightning bugs, the fireflies, and catch them. Um, we do have a lot smaller populations out here in the West. We're still studying and learning a lot about them. Um, so we want to leave them alone, let them do their thing, um, and not catch them. We want to try and minimize light pollution, particularly in those um, areas um, that are known firefly habitat, areas where they might be. Um, so if you are out, um, maybe at night looking for them, um, you'll want to, if possible, um, try and turn um, your lights off um, so that you're not um, confusing those fireflies and adding to the light pollution. Um, looking for naturally based pesticides and herbicides where possible, I know that is not always an option, but as much as possible, if we can try um, and use natural um, ones, I know you can make them with vinegar, lemon, things like that. Um, that's not gonna harm um, that environment that our fireflies live in um, nearly as much. Anything we can do to minimize our carbon footprint, of course, um, can help combat climate change, which is gonna help not only our fireflies, um, but all of the critters that live in those wetlands. And last but not least, um, help us spread the word about fireflies. Um, so there are so many people here um, that don't know we have fireflies that are really shocked to learn that we have them. Um, so I encourage you to do get out and look for them, let others know. Um, you can refer them to those canning conversations. And we do have other programs going on about fireflies. So a little bit more if you want to get involved for fireflies. Um, we do lead some guided firefly walks that are held every night, June 18th through June 23rd. And we begin at 9 p.m. That's a typo. Pardon me. 9 p.m. They're not out at 9 in the morning. 9 p.m. in Virgil Gibbons Park in Nibley. Um, so the cost is $8 for adults, $2 for children. You can purchase those tickets at loganature.org um, right on our website. Um, so you go out with one of our naturalist educators and um, we'll talk to you about fireflies and um, we'll do a little citizen science um, and have a really great night um, watching the fireflies out there in Nibley. Um, our staying at home with Stokes um, theme this week was fireflies. So you'll find all sorts of activities um, on our website, also posted on Facebook. Um, we've got crafts, um, I've got some flashlight games you can do with the family out in your yard at night or if you have a dark room, um, and some other things um, to learn about fireflies. We do have um, our nature tales will be posted um, for a little while. Um, that will be um, posted um, yesterday, um, Friday, um, the we're reading a firefly story. Um, and also if you're interested in receiving a talk to your organization about fireflies, about how to report them or one to towards kids for each or scout groups. 
um, please let me know. I am doing those. Again, I am really interested in uh, coming up into like Franklin County, Idaho. Um, so if you're up there um, and interested in receiving a program um, about fireflies, just email me at community at loganature.org. So anywhere here in Cache County, um, up into Franklin County, I am happy to do that. Um, many of those will be held over Zoom, um, but I am getting packets ready for uh, kids programs that I can send activities out um, to go along with that Zoom call. Um, we hope that you get out and find a lot of fireflies this season. Don't forget to report them and do check out those other programs or staying home with Stokes and our nightly firefly walks um, that are held 9 p.m. in June. Um, they're a lot of fun, a great learning experience for the whole family. Um, thanks for joining me at Stokes Nature Center. It's handy conversation today. Um, we will see you again in two weeks. Thank you.